Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're sorry that this episode took a while to come out. Uh, my life is just an ever living mess, but it's all good. Uh, obviously, this information is going to be pretty outdated. Uh, some of it is still relevant, um, especially the CRL stuff and some of the leak play things that we talked about. But uh, this was recorded almost two weeks ago. So uh, a lot of the CDL stuff is obviously a little bit different now since we're about like two weeks after uh, the opening weekend. So it's all good, though. We're trying our best. We're working all the kinks out so we can try to get these out a little more timely. But uh, yeah, for now, enjoy the episode. The opening weekend of the CDL is in the books, and man, we got ourselves a lot of drama already. From the continued dominance of the Seattle Surge to the meltdowns, and emphasis on the S there, of Optic Texas, this weekend gave us a great glimpse as to what's to come for the CDL season. So, let's start off with the aforementioned Seattle Surge. After a strong second place finish in the kickoff classic, all eyes were on the Surge to continue their dominance this weekend. Led by their two rookie phenoms, Sib and Pred, Seattle swept the New York Subliners. And then immediately followed that up with a defeat of the Toronto Ultra as they took the series 3-2 after holding off Toronto's reverse sweep attempt. And that match ended in the craziest fashion possible as the Iceman struck once again with this Ninja Diffuse here on round 11. I don't know if they know where either of these players are. But the Bans just saw Sim. I've got no idea that accuracy's close by. Kleenex finds one. 2v2. Accuracy's on the Diffuse. Bans. Oh my god! He's not. Is he gonna check it? Here comes Kleenex! Will he get it? The Iceman! The Iceman jumps on the bomb! And it was a fraction of a second! Oh my god! The Seattle roster continues to ooze with talent, so definitely keep an eye on them as they just continue to dominate and be a contender this year. After their opening two matches, the Subliners found themselves in a spot that no team wants to be in. Last place in the standings. After taking an absolute beating from Seattle, they tried to bounce back against LAG. After getting dominated in the first two matches of the series, including a 6-0 search and destroy, they lost the match 3-1, dropping them to 0-2 on the season. It was really an ugly loss for the subliners, and the player stats really tell the whole story. Hydra was the only NYSL player to post a KD above 1.0. As for the rest of the team, well, they all went negative, and Neptune posted a team low of 0.69. That nice. As for the Gorillas, Asim had an absolute field day against his former team. That's the first death. LAG in this round. Oh, oh my, my god. god. The same. He's having a whale of a time. 23 and 17. Guns Neptune. Who's next? Does anyone dare test him right now? He is frying. There are two players in church. There's one player in church. A shame. He's still going. Oh my god. A shame. What is this? And in a sense, I thought I would never, ever, ever, ever say. After the first two matches, the London Royal Ravens find themselves atop the league standings. London quickly disposed of the Florida Mutineers in their first series and then took on Optic in their second. And this is where it gets enormously painful for me. London dropped the first two maps, but then rattled off three straight wins to complete the reverse sweep. The team was firing on all cylinders, but it was Gizmo who shined the brightest with a 1.26 overall KD throughout the series. And combined with the Florida series, Gizmo now holds the second highest KD in the league with a 1.37. London really couldn't ask for a better start, and of course, they had to break the hearts of Optic fans all over the world in doing so. And I guess sticking on with the topic, I think it's time we do talk about Optic. It was a painful weekend for us Optic fans because not only did we lose a Game 5 Round 11, but we lost it twice. It's bad enough that we lost a Game 5 Round 11, but to do it twice in one weekend? I'm not having any fun. And what really sucked was in the Minnesota series when we went to game four, Berlin, and they just choked it. It was in their hands and they just choked it. They gave it to them on a silver platter. These two frustrating series have led to a lot of frustration and sadness within the Optic fan base, including myself, obviously. It's become too frequent for Optic to be losing like this, especially when we saw their decline towards the end of the Cold War season. And now, although these defeats are really crushing and devastating, it seems like the team is maintaining a positive attitude, as Skump went on stream to talk about how it's good that the team is suffering these types of losses early so that they can work on it and improve for the rest of the season. Like, if anything, it's better to get this shit out of the way. Obviously, it sounds like it's better to get this shit out of the way at the start of the year. Last year, we were doing this shit halfway through the year, towards the even the end of the year. 
So maybe we're going to reverse it. You know what I'm saying? I think we're going to look to rebound off of this in week two against the Paris Legion. But I think Illy's going to need a new headset before that. The plant halfway in, Standy. Watching over his teammate, but Illy, he can't seize the opportunity. He comes around the corner and sees two, but Standy has got a fist prepared for him. A huge match to win, a huge moment to win, but all three members drop in just a matter of seconds. It's all on to the captain. It's all on to Scump. A huge 1v3, but Rocker will take it in the end. Rocker will hold on. We really couldn't ask for a better start to the CDL season. We saw lots of storylines start to unfold and everything is just so chaotic right now. It's a lot of fun to watch. Hopefully this momentum and this mixiness within the standings continues throughout the rest of the CDL season. And now hopping onto our side of the fence, the CRL Vanguard winter season has officially ended and this was definitely one for the books. We saw a few teams barely make it into the playoffs, including my team, the New York Subpar and Bronze Premit. The Seattle Sloths would take an early exit after losing their semifinal match to get the Seattle Sloths, who would then go on to lose to the Florida Muleteers. They get this last 10 seconds. They'll only be about three to four points away from winning this game. And the kills are going in their favor. As you can see, four down in the kill feed for the side of Florida, Florida Muleteers. They're two points away from the win. And they got the rotation in your Florida Muleteers are your champions. In gold pre-made, it was a battle for the ages as both undefeated teams in the regular season made it to the grand finals, and that series did not disappoint. After Paris let down, we're down 0-2 and, and looking to avoid a sweep against the LA Dweebs. They fought back and forced the game five before this happened. He sees another player. They're both in front of him on that bomb. He has a nade and a smoke to work with. It looks like with 35 seconds left, Gonzo could definitely win this round for the LA Dweebs. Looking for any players he could find. He sees AJ, isn't able to get the kill. AJ playing his life like normally. And AJ closes out the round win. Paris letdowns win the search and destroy. And oh they my. are your gold pre-made champions of this Vanguard season. Both teams were 7-0 going into the playoffs and easily cruised into the grand finals. The matchup was highly anticipated. And although Paris got off to a rough start and it was starting to look ugly, they were able to fight back and get their reverse sweep. Congrats to Paris let down on the chip, but this is certainly not the last time we'll be seeing this LA Dweeb squad. It was a wild one over in the bronze mixed playoffs as there were upsets of plenty and two teams rose from the ashes. It was Denver Surrender and Chicago Haunted who got themselves into another game five where we went to Desert Siege and saw this. Grim in Vermont, two players who've been very, very impactful for this team. They, all they have to do is kill Zuccari and this is over. But Zuccari, he does have the bomb in hand. He doesn't know what side he wants to play. He's, he's getting shot at from Vermont there. And he's going to have to deal with Grimm, who's going to be coming from the middle of the map. How much you want to bet he's going to be on a flank right now? Yeah, these players coordinating perfectly as Vermont gets the kill. And that's going to be a victory for the Denver Surrender for the Bronze Championship. Grimm ended up with two rings this season in bronze, both in mixed and in pre-made. So congratulations to him for that. And I'm sure he's got more championship rings in his future. And finally, in gold mix, it was Denver Surrender and Chicago Hunted again as these two stack rosters definitely put on a show. In what was arguably the best series of the winter playoffs, two of these hardpoint maps were decided by less than five points, and one SD went all the way to round 11. Here is probably the biggest highlight of that series. Chicago has to get in there. They have to get in there right now. The game is slipping through their fingers. The final push commences. Moose going to check the corner, but remote ready. I don't know if Chicago have it in it. Sox grabs two, but it's going to get traded out again. Aid caught, keeping it nice and secure. Last one, desperation mode for Chicago. Boots grabs one, Moosey there with the follow-up, but it's gonna get killed. Oh. Sox keeps the two, they can win. They can win off of this, they got a hold. But Denver still containing the spawns for right now, but they're keeping them off of this. Chicago getting the big kills, remote gonna stay alive. Sox, Glover, are they really gonna win off of this? One final push, they're not close enough. Chicago, oh, off of this girl. are you kidding me? What just happened? What? A miracle play on P3 by Chicago, who once again, from the brink of death, hold it down and send us to a game five. That is two hard points in a row if they've done that. You've got to be kidding me. Sox was easily the MVP for Chicago as he dropped a whopping 149 kills in three hard point maps. It really seemed like Sox was going to be able to carry his team to victory but it was the balanced Denver roster that were able to bring it back. So Denver putting the ball in Chicago's court. It's now or never. Chicago needs a big, big regain here. He got still got the sniper, but he's actually going to get the pistol kill on the Moosey. Just stabbing with him as the sniper, and he's going to pick up stocks. Acock goes huge, fully with the follow-up. Denver surrender. I've brought it home. They are your gold mix winter chumps. 
The CRL playoffs were full of highlights and incredible moments, so definitely be sure to check out the VODs on YouTube as well as all the clips that we have on our Twitch channel and get ready for next season because it's going to be a good one. All right, that's enough about the past because the Vanguard spring season is a couple weeks away and Roster Mania is already in full gear. Luckily, the Intel master himself, Randy, has got us covered. One of the biggest leaks so far this season has been with the return of the one and only Maui Chum Squad, who have won multiple CRL rings over the course of the last few seasons. Not only are they returning, but they are expected to play in the Diamond Division next season. More on that later. I know for a fact that Boozies is a big fan of Vanguard and even went on to say, quote, this is the best COD since Black Ops 1. And I know the rest of his team are ready to continue the grind that is Call of Duty Vanguard. Elsewhere in the league, we have Floofy, aka Floofbot, forming a brand new team with Elusive Sniper, Swift, and Big Foo in gold pre-made, with a couple players moving up to give themselves a new challenge. Also, it's been rumored that Ransom is teaming up with Zips, Kyle, Infamous, and Zavbaby for next season in Silver Pre-Made North, a division that was one of the most stacked divisions in the entire CRL last season, and may be just as stacked going into this upcoming season. And finally, the news you've been all waiting for. This upcoming spring season will finally be the first ever season that features the brand new Diamond Division. After being pushed back a season, the Diamond Division is ready for launch and the rosters, <laughs> the rosters are loaded. The Diamond Division will start out with just six teams for now, but will continue to grow and will feature players and teams that have had lots of success in the CRL Platinum Division, a lot of them already with some rings. First off, we have the Green Bay Goats, who will be represented by Leafs, Zahid, Lorenzo, Joss, Skapan, and Urgent. This squad is fresh off a playoff run in Platinum Pre-Made, which saw them finish victorious in a 3-2 victory in the finals. Next up is the Paris Renegades, who will be represented by Dahmers, Rocky, Electric MC, and El Buki. Dahmers and his team are returning after taking a season off, or rather, they didn't sign up in time, and are looking to return to their Cold War form, which saw them as a top-tier Platinum team in Season 5 of Cold War. Next, we have my personal favorite, the Philly Fighters, represented by Boozies, Gother, Crash, and Eaton, the returning Maui chums. Boozies and his old Maui chum squad are returning for the spring season and are looking to continue their dynasty under a new name, although this may be their toughest road yet. Up next is the DC Minutemen, who will be represented by the squad of Boots, Dak, Sox, Mott, and Bendy. While the squad did get bounced out early in the Platinum Premium Made playoffs of the previous season, the addition of Dak should be a nice bonus. These guys are all seasoned CRL veterans, so it will be interesting to see how far they are able to go. Next up is another personal favorite of mine, the Sin City Slayers. This team will be led by Fallen, Eggy, Wally, Shadow, Resent, and Snoop. This old squad will be without Scapun, but the addition of Snoop should hopefully fill up any of those holes. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Vancouver Comets, led by none other than Gear, Jake, Nime, and Outages. This team surprised many last season and emerged as one of the best top platinum teams in the league. Although they fell short of expectations in the playoffs, that certainly won't stop them going into Diamond. So for those of you who might have not heard all the rumors about Diamond before, how exactly does Diamond work? Well, our Diamond Division is basically our premier league in the CRL. Most, if not all, of the Diamond matches will be streamed on our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash codrecleague. In addition to that, we'll also be including features such as stat tracking and exclusive analysis that won't be quite ready for other divisions as of yet. This project will continue to go as the seasons go on and we'll also be looking for tons of feedback along the way. I can't believe I'm about to say this sentence out loud, but after three long months, League Play is coming to Call of Duty Vanguard. The mode that everyone has been asking, no, pleading for since the game's launch is being added as a Valentine's Day gift to the community along with Season 2. Sledgehammer, as I'm sure you can imagine, has been under heavy fire recently for this game, and the game not releasing with ranked play is definitely the focal point of that criticism. And interestingly enough, because we can never get everything that we want around here, the League Play will be releasing as a beta, which has left a lot of people angry. And although I say that with such disdain in my voice, let's hold off the anger until we get our hands on it, and then let's wait until we hear this round table on Friday, and then we'll go from there. We have ranked play now. At this point, I'll take what I can get. Now, obviously one of the biggest concerns coming into the newest rendition of ranked play is if it's any improvement off of the Cold War ranking system. Throughout the entirety of Cold War, fans were infuriated with this system, and man, that never changed, and people are still hating on it to this day. So hopefully, new ranks will be fixed, but based on what I've heard, there's going to be some type of combination between the Cold War ranked play system and the World War II ranked play system that still includes the gems for wins system. So take that 
as you will. And although we had to wait so long to finally get ranked play, I'm so happy it's finally here. I love eights and playing eights in the CRL more than anything. As a player, I love doing it all the time, but it's nice to be able to just hop on and just play a competitive game if I have a little bit of time here and there just to get my reps in for the week. And again, I have to make this abundantly clear. If we had ranked play in the beginning of this game, we would see growth in the Call of Duty League and other leagues and competitive COD just in general. We need ranked play at launch. I hope Modern Warfare 2 will have ranked play at launch. It better. So with that being said, that's going to conclude it for this episode of Rec Center. If you guys enjoyed, please feel free to leave a like and comment. Let us know what you think, what we can improve on as we continue to make this wonderful, wonderful ever growing show please feel free to subscribe to this youtube channel so we're going to be kicking out content left and right as much as we possibly can we're starting to get the grind back and it feels so good to be back also if you want to catch our, our streams head on over to twitch.tv slash cod rec league and that's where you can find all of our upcoming streams including the upcoming diamond division follow us on instagram facebook twitter and tiktok as well that's where we are most active and where you can see all updates including the crl and obviously if you want to join the league be a part of this wonderful community that's ever growing feel free to join the discord below discord.gg slash codrectly my name is rob marson the third i'll see you next time